So let's get out of this and have a look now at history and milestones and auto compare. So I have another file open here. I'll just switch over to and minor change on the document manager. We're in the new file. Now starting with history and milestones. Working Papers has two tools to make controlling and reviewing changes to the information in your client file easier and more efficient. History events and milestones. History events are found under engagement history. You can set up the Working Papers to record a history event whenever a specific event occurs in your client file in the settings tab. And here you see the categories that are available. And I've selected all of my categories, as well as some save types that are available. And for a listing of save types, I'll just drop down beside role completion here. We can set it to none, so it would only attract, track who did it and when. Or we can go with an overall change. We can create a milestone, which would be one milestone for all users that are triggering this change would overwrite the previous milestone, or a single milestone for each user, or in my example, I'm going to use a milestone for every event. That would mean that anyone that signs off on the document at any time would get a milestone for that document. Now a milestone is a snapshot of the document at that point in time. Coming out of this, this tab allows you to specify which actions are recorded as history events. Now some of the events and changes to the engagement properties, sign in, sign out, and the client file, modifications to accounts or journal entries, or re-indexing or reposting of the file are recorded on a client file level. To see these events, on the engagement menu, again, we select the history, which we already are, and, and we choose the history tab. And here you can see some of the file level history that's available to us in this particular file. Other events, for example, document access or modification of any properties, check-in or check-out, completion of roles, or changes to commentary text are recorded in the document level. So if I click OK here, and to see some of these events, I've been working in this file a little bit, and I've got my cache document. Uh, with that highlighted, I'm going to go to the document menu and select properties. And then click on the history tab. And here you can see that I accessed this document yesterday. I changed the automatic document properties a couple times, and then I accessed it a second time. So any history that's taking place that's associated with a particular document will be recorded in that document's properties. Each history event includes details on the time and date of the event and information identifying the user performing the action. Now we can see that here, but we can also click on the details to see a few more details about that particular history event. And I'll just close that. The user information is derived from either the username entered in the login screen for a file with protection turned on, or by the information filled in in the user identification dialog the first time the Working Papers files is accessed on a computer. The types of actions recorded can be set on a file-by-file -file basis. Again, some of the events such as changes to engagement properties, client file access, and sign and sign out with the client file are recorded on the client file level. Let's go back into the history once again at the file level. Under the engagement menu, I select the history item, and again we see the history options available to us here, and we can see that the file was accessed a couple times today as well. Now, there is a button down at the bottom for details, and if I click on the details button, it shows me the details of the highlighted history item. And I will close that. We also have a view milestone button. That's great out right now. I have to select a history event that has a milestone associated with it. And we can tell which events have a history uh, milestone based on the paperclip icon in the dialog. Now here we see document 5B does have a milestone. So if I select that, we can then click on the view milestone button to open the history items in a separate window. I would scroll through the view to view the milestone. And for a deleted document, clicking the deleted document history event displays a copy of the missing file as a read-only document. So this is a deleted document. When I hit view milestone, this is read-only, and it is a copy of that particular document that was deleted previously. And I'm just going to close that. Again, back in engagement history, we also have the ability to delete the milestone, to delete a milestone document, select the document from the listing, and then click delete milestone. 
If the milestone was created manually using document save milestone, the milestone is deleted completely. If the original milestone was created as part of an automatic document event, Working Papers immediately deletes the milestone information but leaves the history event in the dialog. The milestone can no longer be used for comparison purposes but still retains the details about its creation, date, time, creator, and comments. Now, it's important to note I'm not in the SmartSync version of Working Papers at this time. I'm in the non-sync version. And some of the options for this feature are not available in Working Papers with SmartSync. I just want to talk about milestones. Now, a milestone differs from a history event in that the history event records details of the action, such as the time and date while a milestone is recording of the content of the document at that point in time, as I mentioned earlier, a snapshot of the document. You can manually create a milestone of the document at any time by accessing the document menu and selecting Save Milestone. We just provide a comment, cache now, and hit the Save button. I've now created a new milestone for my cache document that was not generated automatically by a history event. Milestones can be created for case view or automatic documents as well as linked Excel and Word documents. Milestones are created manually again by selecting the document you wish to the milestone, select document, save milestone, and provide the milestone name. Milestones are also created automatically based on the Engagement menu, History Settings tab, where we choose how we're going to save each category to generate a milestone or not generate a milestone. Now, on a year-end close, history items are rolled forward into the new file as part of the year-end. History items can be cleared from a file by running a cleanup process and choosing the option Clear History from your file. Cleanup is available also under Engagement, Cleanup. Here you can see we have the option to retain our history. And if I do keep the history, I have the option either to retain or delete the milestones. Leaving it blank will delete it, as well as getting rid of any documents in the recycle bin. I'm going to cancel this. Now, there is a tip here, minimizing the history database file size. The history database file, or the HIDBF, contains history records and generally should not become very large. However, the associated history database file, HI.FPT, could potentially become very large as milestones are stored within this file. Milestones capture a picture of a document at a point in time, and the size of the milestone will largely depend on the document type, what is contained in the document, and how much of that information can be compressed. Generally. PDF documents and graphic intensive documents do not compress well and will create milestones of similar size to the original document. And the creation of milestones can be performed manually at any time or automatically through the history settings with each client file. The history settings can be largely attributed to how large the history database file becomes, as quite often they are set to create milestones for every event. Now, Working Papers has the ability to notify the user if a document has changed by flagging it on the document manager. To do this, we need to have a milestone for the document and have the history settings set to auto compare the differences. Now, if I go back into the cache document properties, you can see that I have a milestone associated with it right now, but I'm going to create an automatic milestone. So let's assume I'm finished with document A cache. So I open it up to have a quick look at it and we can see I've actually decided to include the details of my transactions through the accounts here, make it a little more detailed on my cash lead sheet. I'm happy with all this, so based on this outcome, I'm going to right click and sign off as the preparer. Now, because of my settings in my engagement history, a milestone has been created in the document properties. And here you can see role prepared by completed and the milestone graphic. Now, if I or another user in the file makes a change to the file that affects document A, the one I've signed off, using the auto compare feature uh, will notify me by changing the line item on the document manager to red and underlining it in the document manager. Now right now I haven't changed anything. Now to turn on the auto compare feature I return to history under engagement, history, 
and I select the Auto Compare tab. And then I select how I would like to be notified. Now there are a number of options here, but my personal preference is last completion, referring to the sign-off roles of any role, or I could choose a specific role in the file by me in this situation. Then I'll apply the changes and click OK to exit the dialog. Now, if I go to the adjusting entry screen under account, adjusting journal entries, I'm going to add new entry 13. Now entry 13 is going to be for accounts receivable cutoff error. And I'm going to post that to account 103 for $100,000. And I'm going to offset that to account 301 sales. Now if I return to the document manager, we see immediately that the cash document is red and underlined. It's changed since the last time I signed it off. Now opening the cash document, we can see the changes in the document and that there's new adjusting entry detail. So there's the 105,000 there. We can even see what was there by selecting view comparison details. to see the old information in the file. Old information appears in gray and is struck out. Now, I indicated that this was an accounts receivable issue, but I posted it to cash. So I'm going to right click on the adjustment and choose go to source. That's going to take me directly back to that adjusting entry and I'll fix the account number uh, and use 108 instead of 103 accounts receivable in my file. If I return to the cash document, we can see the difference is cleared and it returned to the original state when I signed off. Also, on the document manager, it no longer flags the document as changed. Alternatively, I could have removed my initials through the prepared by and then re-signed off the document if I wanted to accept that change. Now, to view a list of all history items in the file, we can create a new automatic document. Now I'm going to insert it right here and I'll go insert new document, that's an issue, insert new document, automatic document, and click OK. Now the automatic document type is history, so I'll scroll down to find history. The format allows you to choose which items you want to view in the document. I can scroll through here and choose all history events. and click OK. Now opening the new document displays all history items in the file. Again, to clear the list of history items, a user can select engagement, cleanup, and run through the dialog to make the selections desired to remove milestones and or history.